What's up, family? It's your coach, JC, and I am coming on here. I am back with another video for you guys today. I am a life and purpose coach, and I help women to own her. I help women and men alike to step into their purpose. And today I'm coming on here with another message. This message is about unforgiveness, okay? It's about unforgiveness. And uh, earlier today while I was just, you know, working on some stuff, this thing just came to me. And so I said, well, I need to share this with everybody. I need to share this because maybe you are dealing with unforgiveness and you don't know how to forgive. So this message is for you. Maybe it's your mom. Maybe it's your daddy. Maybe it's your brother. Maybe it's your sister. And them. Maybe it's your pastor. Maybe it's uh, uh, somebody at church, whoever it may be. But today I want to help us because when you don't forgive, God cannot forgive you. And if your sins are not forgiven, then that is, that is one of the reasons why your blessings have been held back. And uh, God, he wants us to have a pure heart. He don't want our hearts to be contaminated. And because we have to carry his spirit, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit cannot dwell in an unclean temple. But it's not talking about your physical temple. It's talking about your spirit. It's talking about your spirit, man. And how many of us know that the heart is the is the soul? It makes up of the mind, the will, and the emotions. And so that is where you want God to dwell. You want God to dwell in you. You want his spirit to inhabit your body, to inhabit, to inhabit your temple so that you can fulfill everything that God has ordained for you to fulfill so that you can do whatever God is calling for you to do. But if your heart is not pure, then how many of us know that we will not be able to walk into the blessings or the things or the will of God? And so if you see me looking down today, y'all, I am looking at my notes because I wrote some stuff day, some stuff down today, family, that's going to really help you to be able to go ahead and burst through that wall of unforgiveness. And yes, of course, prayer is included, but we praying as we go. So the number one thing, the first I want to read the title for today. And the title that I put down for today is unforgiveness was costing me everything. Unforgiveness cost me was costing me everything listen when you don't forgive and let go there are repercussions to unforgiveness and anybody who have experienced a high level of intimacy with god understand and we know that if we don't forgive our sins will not be forgiven and that is a dangerous place okay and so what is unforgiveness so unforgiveness is a state and a condition of our heart where we have allowed different things uh, into our heart. We won't let go of things. It's just the act of not letting go. That's simply what unforgiveness is, not letting go. And how many of us know that when we don't let go, God cannot release? And so unforgiveness is 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 like a cancer in the bones it's like cancer in the body it's literally like a form of witchcraft against yourself because you won't even you won't release so that god can release you won't let go so that god can add to you thinking that that pain is serving you a purpose you think that that pain is serving you uh, 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 and doing you a favor, but that pain is literally crippling every area of your life. But today I, I decree and declare freedom is your portion on today. The next point I want to go to, where does unforgiveness come from? I'm glad you asked. Number point number one from this question, unforgiveness can come from childhood hurt and trauma that is unhealed. Yes. Unforgiveness can come from a childhood pain or a childhood trauma that is simply unhealed. We have all experienced trauma to a certain degree and a certain level because if you live living on this earth called planet earth, you have been hurt. You have went through some level of trauma, whether it was in a car accident, whether that trauma came from you uh, uh, hitting your head or hitting your leg or hitting your toe or hitting... You cutting yourself, whether it was that type of trauma, because it's different levels of trauma. But however and whatever, 
Trauma has located you at some point and level in your life. But how many of us know that God's desire is that we don't stay in an unhealed state? How many of us know that it's God's desire that his to see his children free and to see his children operate in such a level of healing that it begins to heal other people just by your presence? Because the spirit of the Lord can dwell in you because you are not your heart is not is not unclean. And so while the Holy Spirit is a gift to every believer, the Holy Spirit is not dwelling in every believer. I mean, every Christian. Because some Christians have not perfected the, um, the, 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 the mind frame of believing. And by perfecting, I do not mean that you're literally perfect in yourself. I mean that you have allowed God to do a work in your heart. And to do a surgery in your heart so that the Holy Spirit can dwell in you. Not every believe, not every Christian, I'm sorry, has allowed the Holy has allowed God to do the work on their heart. And so we're walking around in, in, in rooms and, and in circumstances that that we don't even have to walk in because we don't have the knowledge that whom the son set free is free indeed. We don't have the knowledge of what Jesus did on the cross for us. We're not we're not comprehending what the cross even mean. We're not understanding that the blood of Jesus was shed for us to be free. And so we walk around dealing with the childhood hurt and trauma that is still unhealed because of our lack of humility. Because you feel like it's better to put up a wall and to put up uh, this barrier of protection because you feel like can't nobody else protect you better than you. How many of y'all have said that? Oh, ain't nobody got me like me. I got me. See, I got me. How many of y'all said that? I got me. Well, it's actually not true. As a kingdom citizen, you are not responsible for yourself. The Bible says that your life has not is no longer your own. Once you are engrafted into the kingdom, your life belongs to God. You were bought with a price which simply tells you that your life is no longer your own. And so now, family, it is time for you to allow God to do the healing work in your heart and in your mind. And guess what? All of us have to be healed. If you have went through any trauma, even in your adulthood, it ain't got to just be in any trauma at all. You got to go through a healing process. Cut, cut your leg open. Cut your, cut your, cut your wrist. Cut, cut, cut your, cut your, and by your wrist, I mean like the top part. Cut this. Cut, cut your finger. You know, cut, 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 cut a part of, 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 of your, of your arm, your forearm right here, or, or your leg or your knee, bust your knee open and see, will that thing bleed out if you don't go to the ER and will you not, will you not be able to walk on it if it's not healed? Absolutely not. You wouldn't be able to walk on it. So it is with you, child of God, if you do not heal, you won't be able to step into things, the things that God has for you. Healing is vital and healing is the children's bread. God came to heal you today. Will you receive the healing of the Lord? Will you receive the portion of healing that God has for your soul today? Because healing is yours if you want it. Point number two in this question, where does unforgiveness come from? The root of bitterness. There was a scripture in the Bible where Jesus was talking to the disciples and he told them, if you cast this, if you cast this sycamine tree into the sea, that that sycamine tree will have to be uprooted and cast into the sea. And if you literally go and do a little research on the sycamore, the sycamore roots is literally deep, deep, deep. And so it is with bitterness. Bitterness runs deep. Bitterness can kill bitterness can cause you to live in a place where 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 you are sick all the time listen the sycamore tree not sycamore but sycamore tree its roots go real deep and how many of you know that the root of bitterness runs deep it takes you time to unlayer those roots, to uproot those roots. But you know who do the uprooting? God. 
So then you have to have a level of humility, family, to be able to allow God to begin to pull the roots of unforgiveness up and bitterness out of your heart. Because it was so much that happened to you as a child. It was so much that happened to you when you lost that marriage, when that man walked away from you, when that woman walked away from you, when you lost your child, when you lost everything. That stuff caused trauma. And how many of us know that that stuff runs deep? So today I command your sycamore tree to be uprooted in the name of Jesus and we cast it into the sea. Today you will walk in your healed place. So I'm going down to my next point. How? I'm going to talk to you about how unforgiveness literally held me back. When I was younger, I went through all types of stuff. I went through all types of abandonment issues, rejection issues, low self-esteem issues. I went through issues where I, I was in situations with men. I had been through molestation. I had been through incest. Listen. And so when you go through trauma as such as that, I went through also things as such as divorce as well. And when you go through any level of trauma, you've got to go through a, through a season of detoxing. Because if you don't detox from that trauma, and listen, I want to say this before I say that. Detoxing is your choice. This ain't up to mama and them. This ain't about what mama and them did. Well, why would I forgive them when they didn't hurt me? Well, why would I forgive? Well, if you want to stay there, I'm sorry, but that place won't get you healed. Why would you forgive them? Because Christ forgives you if you forgive them. And if you don't forgive them with all of your many sins, and as they are red as scarlet, meaning they are there is much. And you want God to turn around and forgive you. But God said, I can't even forgive you. I want to. My son died for you to be forgave and forgiven. It's already done for you. It was paid for already. But literally, if you don't allow me, if you don't allow me to heal you through you forgiving them, then how will I be able to, if you don't, if you don't allow me to heal you through forgiving them, then how will I be able to uh, forgive you? So many of us are held hostage. Many of you are held hostage because of your lack of unforgiveness. So why should you forgive them? Because you want to be free. How many of y'all feel bound, incapable of going to the next level? Feel like your destiny, your purpose is locked up. Feel like somebody else got the key to your life. Come on, who am I talking to? You feel as if though nothing is shifting for you and you prayed and fasted. Listen, don't you know in Isaiah, the, chapter, the book of Isaiah, when God teaches us how to fast, that a part of that fast is checking your heart. Don't you know that a part of checking your heart is forgiveness? And listen, I understand it could be hard, but it's possible because God told us through him all things are possible. See, you've been trying to forgive them in your strength, but you haven't went to the master, the one who is the healer of your soul. You haven't sat there long enough and talked to him about everything that pained you and ate you because you're still trying to hold on and you and, and to the unforgive the pain that it cost you. You're so familiar with the pain that you haven't taken out time to go to the master, go to God, go to Abba, the one who loves you as a father, the one who hears you as a counselor, the one who will redeem you as a saver, as a savior. You won't go to the healer. The one who uh, who can restore your soul and as he leads you beside the still waters. You've been leading yourself for long, too long. And so now you've come become accustomed to the pain. You become accustomed to that, to that, to that, to the way that it feels. You built up a wall and you become accustomed to that wall being built. But today we tear the wall down by the blood of Jesus. We command your healing to come forth today. And every limitation and every wall that you have put up in the place where God wants to come in, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will begin to allow God to begin to soften your heart. And I pray that God will 
make your heart of flesh and that those walls will come down because it's time for you to discover the you that God have ordained you to be. It's time for you to walk in your destiny. I couldn't walk in today when I walk in today if I was bound by yesterday's hurt and last year pain. No, no ma'am and no sir. God wouldn't allow me to walk in this. It takes a dying. It takes a stripping. It takes the fire of God to walk in your purpose. You can't do it without the fire. You can't do it without the oil. You can't do it without the anointing. You can't do it without the Holy Spirit. You need to go through the process. In order to walk into your purpose, it's going to require you to forgive them people. Who hurt you? If you don't remember who hurt you, begin to ask God to bring it to your remembrance. Father, I'm coming to you. You are the mighty counselor. The devil been having my stuff locked up too long. And Father, I'm coming to you to repent. I'm coming to you to ask forgiveness. And I forgive every person and I will begin to lay it out before God. And watch and see if you do that. Will God not respond to you because it's his word and his word will never return unto him. Boy, God is going to respond to you. Oh my God, God is going to respond to you. He knows what hurts your heart. He knows the pain you feel. He knows the sleepless nights. He knows the tears you cry. He understand what they did. He knows that it wasn't fair. God knows it, but he wants to know when you trust him to get that stuff from you. Get it out of your hands and put it in the hands of God by spending time with him and you release everything you could think of. And then you keep on asking God, reveal, 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 so that every person that who, 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 you, who you bring to my remembrance, God, I just want to be free. Keep revealing until I see every name that I need to repent and pray and, and release a blessing over them and forgive them and let them go. Because there's some people who still walking under walking under a curse because you haven't prayed for them. Because they molested you. Because they 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 raped you. It was your own family. It was incest coming from the bloodline. And they and, and, and you see them and they and it's just like a curse came up on them. Mandre baby so called rabababaha. But you are the bloodline breaker. That thing didn't come to destroy you. God is too big to allow something for a chosen one to allow something to happen to his chosen one. Listen, I've been there. I had to forgive the family members who molested me. The one that 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 uh that 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 made it seem like it was okay for me to sleep with them and then my virginity was gone. Listen, I had to allow God to heal that place so I could walk fully into the things of God so that I could step into my destiny, so that I could step into my purpose, so that my gifts will be unlocked. Listen, you don't know what you're holding back as you hold back from God. You don't understand the things that you are missing. You don't understand his freedom on the other side. You don't understand your deliverance is on the other side of you forgiving them. Those prayers you've been waiting to be answered for for years. God said, if you release them today, I will release you and I will release the answers unto you. I will release those prayers that you've been praying to me for years and I will heal your body. I will do a new thing in your body. I will do a new thing in your mind. I will do a new thing in your heart. If you release that pain, if you release that hurt, if you let me heal that trauma. I'm telling you, there is no other healer like healer God. Yes, we go to counselors, but let me just break, bring this breaking news from the kingdom of God, that there is no greater healer than the healer Abba, than the healer God. There is no greater healer. Nobody can heal you like God can. Nobody can sustain you like God can. Nobody can wipe your tears away like God can. Nobody can pick you up but God. 
those codependent habits that you have where you literally are dependent on people to give you what you need and you feel insufficient if you don't have the thing or the people or the places that you depend on to make you feel whole to make you feel worthy to make you feel like you are somebody but God said I made you in my image and after my likeness I have a desire for you a desire that's bigger than any human desire a desire to love you endlessly until the end of time. A unconditional, unfailing love. A unwavering love. A love that you can count on in the morning. A love that you can count on at night. A love that you can count on when you're broken. A love like you've never seen before. God wants to heal your broken heart and bind your wounds today. Me conjured it in sore baba baba ha. Me kandara na manyo na 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 manyo kor baba baba ba sha. Father, send your healing to your children today. Allow the healing anointing to just rest on their hearts today and massage God. Heal God. Restore and replenish Father. In Jesus name. The next point, the moment that God released me was the moment that I released it. We talked about it already. The moment that I released the burden, what people did to me, how it made me feel to God, I was free. I'm talking about almost instantly. And I began to see my everything that God had for me. It was also my season of purpose. But everything God had for me in that moment, it began to unlock. I'm talking about new rooms. I begin to walk in new rooms. I begin to walk. People begin to ask me to come and speak about things that I've dreamed about. About topics, about things that I had to walk through. And I, they didn't even know me yet know really much about me and just ask me to come and speak for them. Listen. It's going to hurt you to forgive, but it's going to hurt worse if you stay in that place. Once you release it to God in prayer, put you on some soft music, get real low, pour out and even if you're crying, cry out because in that moment, God is healing you through the cry. And he's going to pour healing anointing is on this on this on this uh, video. He's going to allow you to feel his healing anointing. The next point. Pray to God. This is oh, yeah. The question. How do you be free? How can you be free? You're going to pray to God and pour it all out. As I said before. God said, a broken spirit and a contrite heart, he will not despise. I mean, he will not turn you away. For some of you all, this is how the generational curse is going to break. Every single one of them. When I finally surrender my life and surrender my heart to God. Sorry, y'all. The camera lens is up. When I finally surrender my heart and surrender my mind to God. And I surrendered me to God. I sur began to surrender. It was at that moment that not only did purpose collide with his timing, but generational curses, things that I had been struggling with for years, began to break. And even if the devil tried to bring up something, it doesn't work because I have entered into covenant with God. When you surrender to God, you enter into covenant with him. And if you're in covenant with God, God is keeping his covenant and watching his word over your life. And it is nothing that the enemy can do to destroy you or overtake you. And that means those generational curses will be broken. Just like that. Some of you need to surrender your will for his today. The next point. Ask God. To reveal anyone you need to forgive. And then 
Pray until you see the release. I've already said this earlier. I think the flow came and I just, you know, I wrote these down, but the flow came before I got to the question or the point in the question. But you're going to literally take time to pray and release it all. Don't leave nothing out. Treat God like he's the only one you got because it's true. He may put other people around you, but he's the all-sufficient one. He may put other people in your midst to help, and they love you, they do, but he's the all-sufficient one. Will you trust him as all-sufficient today? Will you take your eyes off of the crowd? and trust the all-sufficient God today. The last point, you're gonna make, you're gonna ask the Holy Spirit to give you the spirit of forgiveness because as you're doing all of this, you're being transformed as well. And you're gonna need the Holy Spirit to help you. So you need to ask him, I want the spirit of forgiveness. I command it to enter my heart. I pray that the spirit of forgiveness would overtake my heart. It is my portion. You've got to remember life and death lies in the power of your tongue. And whatever you speak, that is your portion. Once you've entered into covenant with God, there is nothing that can stop you, child of God. It's time for you to break the limitations off of your life through forgiveness. I love you guys. I'm praying for you that the Lord will bless you, increase you, bring you into your destiny and your purpose. If you have not already heard, I do do one-on-one -on -one coaching at this moment. I do do one-on-one -on -one coaching and all of my information um, will be posted very soon because I have to make it known to more people what God is doing in my life. So stay tuned for the link to my one-on-one -on -one coaching because to anybody who wants to get coaching on purpose, you, you, you heard a message that I may have God given and you just want to connect. What I want you to do is I want you to continue to be on the lookout. Inbox me and let me know I want to connect because there's coming a time and an hour where God is requiring more and he's requiring you to step up and to step into your destiny and into your purpose. That forgiveness is gonna work for you. It's gonna serve you. That pain is gonna serve you. So let me help you to get into, to get into position so that once you are in alignment with God, you can now experience the goodness of, of, of the Lord and all his promises that he spoke over you. You will begin to see them one by one. And I prophesy over you that you won't hesitate when I do send the link and I begin to put the link in my, in my information section, in the description section, that you will begin to say, you know what, God, I'm ready to step into my purpose. I have been listening to Coach JC for over a few days, weeks, months, whatever time you've been watching this. And it is now time for you to invest in yourself so that you can go to the next level. How many of us know that God put everybody in position to help? It's not about fame or fortune, but it is about the kingdom. And so when we get in position, step into our purpose, there's a whole trial waiting for you. And don't you know when we get in position, step into purpose, don't you know that you will help and build the lives of generations and somebody else's legacy is being built because you said yes to God? Listen, don't hesitate. I want you to actually continue to seek the face of God. Continue to show up and invest in yourself by listening to these videos. Get the knowledge. And, and guess what? I love you. And I will see you in the next video. God bless you for now.